all right everyone here we are with ticker symbol ctrm caster maritime inc and before we jump into this chart i want to say welcome to all the first time viewers and investors welcome to the channel invest for tomorrow to all the subscribers welcome back and as we dive into this chart i do want every single investor and viewer to be aware that towards the end of this video we're going to talk about the tweet of the day and also the s p 500 index why it's been so rocky and what to look for moving forward and the 10 year treasury bonds. So if you guys wanna learn something new about the market and stay tuned to understand it just a tad bit better, stay tuned till the very end of this video. So here we are with CTRM Caster Maritime Inc. And it's been pulling downwards. It tried to fight to come back up and reach a dollar as we could see here. And it started to fall again. So let's see our new resistance and our new support. But when we look at this in the broader spectrum of things, I mean, we've been in a bearish run for quite some time and the lowest point is down here at 85 cents. So I do want every single investor and viewer to be aware of that, that 85 cents is one of the most important support levels moving forward if this downward trend continues. I've stated previously in other videos, $1 needs to be reached and maintained above whether it's in bearish or bullish territory. This stock does need to get back up to a dollar. Now, it keeps fighting for it and then it gets pulled down fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and see here what's important for tomorrow. So the 50 day moving average is 98.21 to be exact. I can't land on it, but 98.21, super important. If that gets crossed, we're back into bullish territory. Anything below it is bearish and that's where we stand right now. We are in bearish territory. So our support here is 93.57 if that gets crossed the next point of reference would be 85 cents to go ahead and see how the stock is reacting between 85 cents and 93.57 and if the bulls are trying to reappear and bring it back up or are the bears tearing this one down fairly fast you do want to keep that in mind and pay very close attention to how the stock is reacting within these levels now if it breaks through support this could be pulling further away from the 50 day moving average in the downward direction. So it's something to definitely keep in mind and be aware of. Now, the 50 day moving average at 98.21 definitely needs to be broken through. But for the bulls to pull away from it, reach newer highs and get deeper into bullish territory, they need to break through the resistance, which is 99.35. The bulls need to break through 99.35, turn that into a support get to $1 and from $1 pull up to newer highs, new resistance levels and work the way up here to 103 and then way up here at 107, 108. But before getting there, 99.35 needs to be broken through, turn into a support so that the bulls can pull further away from the 50 day moving average, work the way closer to $1 and then continue the momentum to reach newer highs, new resistance levels within bullish territory. As always, if you found this video helpful and informative, please do so and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to turn on all notifications and not miss a single video that I post. Share this with your friends and community. And don't forget to hit the like button to let me know you watch this video. Stay tuned till the very end because I have so much information to share with you guys about the tweet of the day, the S&P 500, and the 10-year treasury bond and how that all correlates. Look forward to sharing all the information. I hope you guys learned something new. Stay tuned. So for everyone that has made it to this point in the video, I'm going to talk about the S&P 500 index and why the market is down and why it continues to pull down and struggle to stay up. Okay. I want us to be aware of this and it has a lot to do with the 10 year treasury. So let's jump into the tweet of the day and we're going to jump back into the S&P 500 index and also 10 year treasury. I usually talk about individual stocks to add to your watch list, but right now I believe there's so much more value in being aware of this than an individual stock. Now, if you want to know live updates on 10 plus ticker symbols that I've already shared with everyone in the last two weeks, and there's many more to come, you can join us over at the Patreon. The link will be down below in the description and you will know live updates on what I'm watching and what attracted me to it. So the tweet of the day is institutional investors buy a stock it makes a bold statement about the stock and the institution's outlook on the stock this is why 
I like to know what institutional investors are buying or looking at because it just makes a bold statement of the company and it makes a bold statement on what they see moving forward. Who is your favorite institutional investor to watch? That's my question to everyone and I'm thankful for the one person that commented and they stated it was ARK. Who is your favorite? Comment down below in the comment section who is your favorite and if you don't have a favorite you need to find one and if your favorite is ARK I really want to encourage every single investor and viewer to find another one. Not just ARK. ARK is great. ARK is growing but ARK is really small compared to some of the largest institutional investors out there that have a track record for the last 20, 30, 40, 50, even century of years. <laughs> like it reaches up to a century. They've been around for so long in the last decades and even up to the last century. So definitely do some research on that. But if you do have one other than ARK Invest, I would love to see you talk about it or comment down below who they are. So let's talk about the treasury yield. So the treasury yield, as I've been looking at it, and I did the beginning of this video, um, it was sitting at around 1.46, almost 1.45, as I was looking at it today, and 1.46 in the last several minutes. I mean, this was literally 20 minutes ago before I started doing the video, I was looking at it, and it's already jumped up to 1.48. When we zoom out to the one month, it's gone up from 1.13, all the way up to 1.48 and when you do the three month it was below 1.0 and we're almost double right almost not there yet and the six month you know you go back down to 0.6 and then year to date and then the one year the lowest that we've seen at 0.5 in the history of the 10-year treasury and when you go all the way to all the highest was up here at 15 percent and all it's been doing is going down. This has been the turnaround and it's making a lot of investors uncomfortable. As long as this doesn't pass 3%, I believe, in my opinion, based off the history of this, it could go back to a healthy consolidation. And if it stays there or pulls back downwards, it could be even a healthier sign for a bullish market. But there's going to be a lot of rockiness and a lot of uncertainty as this continues to go up if it gets closer to 3% or 2%. Now, this is creating the wildness and the uncertainty in the market overall. And that is why we're pulling downwards. We need to see what's going on. I have the RSI pulled up here on the 30 minute, and this is an oversold area. This could bounce back up and we could see something like this happen, you know, bring itself back up, kind of level off, and then Friday bring itself back up a little bit. And then all of a sudden we pull back down in the near future going into next week or the next several weeks, especially if this continues to go upwards. This is something to watch carefully. It's the 10 year treasury, right? That's what you want to go ahead and search. And it's at 1.4. It's supposed to show a percentage. As long as this stays below 1.5, 1.6, I shouldn't see the S&P 500 falling drastically. But if this continues to go upwards in such a quick spike like we're seeing it, it's going to create some uncertainty and rockiness in the market. So I do want every single investor and viewer to be aware of this. We need to watch this. And hopefully, again, we are in a correction and not a crash because the Treasury yields have hit the all time lows. It's bouncing back. And what if all it does now is go back up to newer highs for the next 5 to 10, 20 years? You know what that can signify for the market? A long-term crash that a lot of investors, experts, billionaires, millionaires are talking about. And Bitcoin is hitting all-time highs. That right there has put a big question mark, in my opinion, on what's going on i just want to be aware and it's very important to not be caught by surprise but i want this to be more of a correction than a crash and that we can continue to grow exponentially and see a bullish market continue with corrections 
that are healthy. No crash and no long-term crash because what would happen is what a lot of experts say, and this is just a quick drawing, don't use the numbers on the side. Imagine that this was the peak up here and we fall all the way down and then the market's just going to sit like this sideways. We hit a big crash and it's just an L shape recovery and then it's going to take some time before, you know, years before that starts going back up slowly. And that would be one of the longest crashes that we've ever been in the history of crashes. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that I'm just thinking this and that all of those experts and billionaires are incorrect and that we can go ahead and hopefully have this priced in somehow into the market and that worst case scenario, this goes up to 2 3%. The market gets adjusted to it. We get used to it and we continue because we were growing even when it was at 2 even 3%. We were a growing economy and the S&P 500 index was growing. So hopefully we can handle this and not get too crazy. But the one thing I'm watching right now more than ever is institutional investors. While all retail investors are scrambling around, they are focused and they're executing orders and large ones on specific stocks. As always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money.